gripper really shines when it comes to making small pieces of wood on the table saw, uh, which might otherwise be a pretty dangerous operation. For example, I use this little chamfer trimming jig pretty often when I'm making stop chamfers on picture frames, for example, like this sample corner of a picture frame here. When chamfers come off of the router table, they tend to be rounded at the ends. I don't think that looks so nice. I don't think it looks nearly as nice as the sharp corners that you see here. Now I get those sharp corners by taking my chamfering jig, holding it in place, and letting it serve as a chisel guide for sharpening up those chamfers. It's a nice detail. Uh, making this jig um, is easily done with the gripper and basically the jig is just an L-shaped piece of wood about one and three quarters square by about five inches long that has a deep rabbit cut into it leaving eighth inch, I'm sorry, leaving half inch wide walls and then the 35 degree chamfer is cut at the end of the piece to serve as a guide. I'll show you how to cut that chamfer in a couple moments here. First of all, let's take a look at how we cut that deep rabbit. We take our stock, first of all, put it in place against the fence, and outfit the gripper with a balance support with a stabilizing plate attached to it. Set the gripper onto your workpiece and first of all shift the center leg over so that it's it and the outer leg are sitting solidly on the workpiece. That references the level of the gripper. Then then drop, you know, make sure that your that your balance support and stabilizing plate are down against the table. Tighten them up. Now you've got good solid footing here. Now I move the center leg out of the way for this operation, leaving the support, the downward support, right next to the fence, utilizing the half inch wide leg. Now we can go ahead and make our first cut here. The blade has been set up to the proper height and the fence has been set up a half an inch away from the blade. Now we'll make our first cut here. Okay, so we've made our first cut. Now our second cut is going to be across here. So we're going to turn the workpiece around like this and make our second cut like this. Now, what I want you to notice is this is the reason for using the stabilizing plate. And that is because our second cut here when we make that second cut, it's going to free the off cut in the center here. This, the, and the stabilizing plate has a hook on the back end of it that will prevent this piece, once it's freed, from spitting out the back of the saw. So that's going to make, make for a nice safe cut here. So set up the cut and begin with the workpiece back against the hook on the stabilizing plate. There we go. There's our piece safely, cleanly made. That would have been hard to do, if not impossible, with any other kind of a push stick. Okay, I'm going to show you real quickly how you make this 35 degree angle on the end of the jig, just so that you'll be able to do it safely. The basic setup is to tilt your blade over to 35 degrees, set your miter gauge to 45 degrees, and clamp and extension onto your miter gauge auxiliary fence just so that you can get support all the way out next to the blade. 
Now you can see that we have clamped our rabbited jig body to the extension fence so everything is solid and ready to go. Now we're just going to make this cut here after aligning the blade up to the corner of the jig that's on the table. That's, that's your cut line. Make sure everything's clamped down securely and make your cut. There you go, that's what you're after.